So 10 years ago, when we started off, it was all about 7IM providing professional investment facilities and services through to professional planners and advisors. That's what we've striven to do, to help them support their work in long, lifetime cash flow analysis. And we focus this on providing a range of risk-rated portfolios with, not predictions, but level of predictability, with costs which we can reduce to make them far better value, and transparency so people can see what's been going on with their money. All of this applied to us as individuals, as well as your clients. Tom, we're coming up to our 10th anniversary. I remember 10 years ago when we set this thing up, it was on the basis of trying to make sure that our pensions and the pensions of the people we will be looking after were actually operating in the way that they wanted, not in terms of predictions, but predictability of returns. Yeah, basically safety, predictability, long-term results that looked like what you thought they were going to look like is what we, you and I were looking for in our own pensions. We found that the disciplines that tended to generate those kind of results lived in the corporate pension world. They didn't necessarily live in individual pensions. Yes, most of the individual ones tend to be very uh, equity-based, looking much more like stockbrokers' accounts, and not having the range of uh, different asset classes that an institutional investment manager would normally have. Yeah, so what we introduced 10 years ago uh, was the, the multi-asset concept of investing, which is now taken for granted, really. Uh, 10 years ago, it wasn't necessarily taken for granted in the retail world. Uh, and the purpose of having very broadly diversified portfolios is so that over the medium to longer term, the return that you expect from a portfolio is more or less what you get. So that mosaic we always love using with all those different asset classes over all those years, I mean, to me, I love putting that up because the only thing it shows is this year's fashion fad is next year's tank top most of the time. You can't seem to predict what happens. So what was the structure we used, therefore, to try and translate this irrational behavior into something that was much more disciplined? Well, we took four different levels of risk. And for each of those levels of risk, we studied the behavior, the historic behavior, sometimes going back about 100 years, of the different asset classes that we could combine to put into a portfolio for that level of risk. And we examined their annual returns. We examined how volatile those returns were. And we also examined how they related to each other, the correlations of those returns, so that when you put them all together, the entire portfolio had an expected return and an expected volatility or level of risk. So we could then plot this on our funnel charts of uh, the volatility in the short period and how that would be drawn to the mean over the longer period. Yes, and, and what the diagram shows, which you and I call the, the funnel diagram, is that in the short run, that the range of possible outcomes is quite wide. That's why we tell people 7IM is not suitable for very short-term money. But for medium term, let's say five, ten years and more, what you find is that the style of management that we employ tends to produce the kind of result which was expected in the first place year in and year out. And for pension money, that seems to be ideal. Now, the expected line that we would have, and that's the line running through the middle, of course, that doesn't include costs. In the real world, you have costs. So when we actually plot our own figures on that, we can get a more real, realistic figure? Yes, what we, what we do in the, in the funnel diagram, if you will, is we show the black line, which is the actual multi-manager fund, which has been around for over eight years. Uh, and it has uh, about 1% in annual costs that have to be factored in. But what you find is even though we've had a pretty difficult period of time uh, since we launched 7IM just after the millennium, that the performance of the funds is pretty much what it says on the tin, which is a wonderful result. And it's interesting, when we then go back to the mosaic picture and plot, actually, where that's been over that time, and you can see how it's just gone up and down a little bit, but again, it's reflecting it. It's running roughly through the middle. Yes, and that was the whole idea behind the risk-rated approach to managing money at 7am. Now, along the way, we've had to be careful of cost because the world got to be more difficult. We've entered into a lower growth, lower expected return world. And in order to sustain the returns, you need lower costs. In order to have lower costs, sometimes we've had to innovate. And so what's that sort of included? Because it's not just been passives, has it? Well, if you take the example of moving from an active manager, which costs about three quarters of a percent per year, to 
uh, an ETF, or an exchange-traded fund, or a passive, or a tracker, which cost about a quarter of a percent, or maybe a little bit more. And then we've even been able to create the baskets of securities that would replicate an index for no underlying costs. So we've gone from 75 basis points, if you will, to 30 basis points, to nil basis points, for certain portions of the underlying cost of the portfolio. This has helped to drive down the costs. So increasing the predictability, lowering the cost, and getting the sort of returns that you wanted to be able to have at the end of it. Did we achieve what we wanted with our pensions after 10 years? Well, so far so good, Justin, but we've got a few more chapters to write. Mm, we haven't finished working yet, have we? Not yet. <laughs> Over the past 10 years, I hope we've been able to demonstrate how bringing in institutional process, structure and discipline through to the intermediary market has been really able to ensure that portfolios aren't just a matter of prediction, but predictability. Making sure they've got proper risk-rated structures to them and making sure that we can strip out unnecessary costs and provide better value to you, the planner, doing your cash flow analysis for your clients and, of course, to the underlying clients. I hope you found that useful. It's been a very exciting decade in markets which none of us would have been able to predict and some of which have been pretty frantic. So here's to the next decade. Goodbye. Thank you.